Hey everybody! Today I wanted to do a video about insects. Um, I got a request to do a video on insects a long time ago and I was trying to um, get a hold of like some insects that have been preserved in the lab that I used to work in but it was unsuccessful. So I figured I'd go ahead and do the video anyway because insects are really awesome and <clears throat> unfortunately I don't have any examples of them so this is going to be more book noises, turning pages, and I'll try to go really slowly so that it's relaxing as well as informative. So let's get started. I have my zoology book that I used when I made the mollusk video and there's a really great chapter on insects in here that I will be going through and just a refresher, zoology is the scientific study of animals. And basically, it's a structured, systematic study in which animals are uh, categorized and put in taxonomic orders based on physical properties, DNA, etc., etc. And I don't know if I have a picture of the five kingdoms of life. But, I know I did in my last video, uh, they are the prokaryotes, which are the bacteria, single-celled bacteria. Uh, the second group is the protists, some of those are also single-celled, actually a lot of them are. You have your fungi, your plants, and your animals, so that's five. And your animal group, kingdom. You have it's basically two main groups, your vertebrates and your invertebrates. Your vertebrates are in a phylum chordata. They have a backbone. That's what a chordate is, among other characteristics that they share in common. And that encompasses mammals, birds, fish, reptiles, amphibians. The other groups are several different phylums of invertebrates. They don't have backbones. That is the um, group we'll be focusing on today as insects lack backbones. So, just a brief introduction to zoology. In particular, insects are in phylum arthropoda. This includes Subphylum Chelicerata, which encompasses scorpions, ticks, spiders, horseshoe crabs, trilobites. They don't have mandibles or jaws, they have chelicerae, which they use to pierce um, the flesh of their prey with. Now, Ticks are not actually insects, and horseshoe crabs aren't actually crabs, so they are in phylum Chelicerata. The other phylum is Crustacea, which encompasses lobsters, shrimp, crabs, krill, copepods. Your aquatic invertebrates with an exoskeleton. And then To the insects, which are in subphylum Uniramia, and they're considered terrestrial um, mandibulates, which means they have mandibles, which means they have jaws. Some things that all of the animals in phylum Arthropoda share in common are a segmented body divided into 
head, thorax, and abdomen, jointed appendages, exoskeleton, often made of protein, lipid, and chitin, complex muscular system, start to have um, hearts and visceral organs, and digestive system, arteries, some of them have gills, you know, the crabs live underwater. Some have air tubes or trachea. And nervous systems, including brains and ganglia, vent ventral ganglia. So, starting to get a little bit more advanced than the mollusks that I looked at in my last zoology video. So, in um, categorizing invertebrates, you basically start with the simplest structures like the sponges that have no circulatory system, um, no nerves, and uh, they become more and more developed, you know, up through where I talked about the mollusks. The arthropods, the insects, fall in between segmented worms, including parasitic worms, and econoderms. So, that is where we stand. And that was just a little information block that I read out of this book. No, I do not have all of the arthropod characteristics memorized. is a beetle. It has a head, thorax, and abdomen. Uh, the thorax is subdivided into different groups. There's antenna, wings, um, labial and maxillary palps, and I'm not going to go over all the parts, but this just shows you basically the inside. I mean the parts. It doesn't show you the inside, actually, the heart. And stuff. I did actually dissect a grasshopper in class once and it was pretty interesting. I didn't know that they had so many complex parts in that little body. So, <clears throat> one thing to note is that insects are the most diverse and abundant of all arthropods. There are more species of insects than species of all other classes of animals combined. So, they have done very well for themselves. They are very widely distributed and adaptable, and one, one cool thing about insects is that most of them are specialized, like one species will only eat one other species of plant or whatnot, so it limits competition and enables them to thrive, and they have covered every corner of the earth thriving <laughs> from very cold climates to the jungle and so we're gonna go through these pages and this just shows the inside of a honeybee, or the honeybee parts. There's a praying mantis. This looks like a rhino beetle. Um, a walking stick, or yeah, a walking stick. And it talks about the power of flight. They can walk and they can fly. It 
this shows the inside. It shows their colon, ovary, brain. The red is their digestive, I mean their um, circulatory system. I think the blue might be their nervous system, but I'll show that to you up close. So, lots of things going on inside of, going on inside of them. <clears throat> they have evolved to eat um, plants, nectar, flesh, blood, other insects, uh, and they can be predators, they can also be parasites. It shows a flea. This shows their different mouth parts and sensory organs, talks about gas exchange and circulation in their bodies. And then it talks about two different types of metamorphosis. There's either complete metamorphosis, like the butterfly that starts as a caterpillar and ends up as a butterfly, and partial and complete metamorphosis where the egg hatches into a grasshopper or cicada and then they eventually molt, um, shed, and become adults. I think, is it the cicadas that? live dormant for years and then they shed and become adults for like a week and then they die. That's crazy. This shows different bugs, different phases of metamorphosis, social behavior. Some of them are really social like the ants and termites. Some are beneficial and some are harmful, as we know. So, that just was some pictures in there. I don't think I have some fun facts I'll share with you guys later. For one thing, terrestrial ecosystems would virtually collapse without insects. That's a fact that I read somewhere. I thought that was really interesting. I have a list here that I'm going to go through of the different groups of the insects. I'm going to read those for you. Okay. So, subclass, class Insecta, subclass A. Terragota is the wingless insects, and those include silverfish, bristletails, then there is class Insecta, subclass Terragota, and those are the winged insects. Uh, some of my favorite groups or orders are Odonata, which are the dragonflies, large membranous wings or long narrow and net veins, Aquatic nymphs, meaning that they lie their uh, their babies in the water. You typically will see dragonflies flying around aquatic environments. They're not technically an aquatic species. Though. Let's see. Another really cool order is Orthopo Orthopotera. Orthoptera, and that includes grasshoppers, locusts, crickets, cockroaches, walking sticks, and praying mantises. And even though grasshoppers are kind of cool and cockroaches not so much, they do have some basic similarities that now that you come to think about it, you're like, yeah, well, you kind of have similar body structures. Uh, 
uh, Blatateria is the suborder for the cockroaches, and that is my least favorite above all else. I don't really dislike any animals, you know, even ticks and fleas and parasites, but there's something about a cockroach that just really doesn't sit well with me when I see one. They kind of act like a big baby. I actually had one crawl across my face in the night. I had a house that had no screens, and so I had my window open, and I lived at the beach where it was kind of damp and humid, and uh, I was trying to let in some air, and sure enough, uh, Roach was like crawling across my mouth, and I, I hit it off, and I looked down at my pillow. It was traumatizing. I know that's not very relaxing, but <laughs> true story. Um, so there's lots of different orders. Let me go over a couple more of my other favorites. Isoptera are the termites. They are uh, narrow wings, uh, winged majority erroneously called white ants. They're not actually ants. They're different from ants in that they have broad unison of thorax and abdomen. They also have a symbiotic relationship with, um, I don't know what kind of bacteria or something in their guts that enables them to digest the cellulose and wood, uh, or wood product, so <laughs> they can eat your house. <clears throat> they can do some damage. Let's see. Lice. Socoptera. Order of Socoptera is lice. Anoplura. Order Anoplura is sucking lice. Uh, order. Homoptera. Homoptera is the leaf hoppers, tree hoppers, aphids, cicadas. Coleoptera, that's my favorite. That has beetles, fireflies, and weevils. The largest order of animals in the world is order Coleoptera. There's something to tell your friends, or maybe they'll come up on Jeopardy, or I don't know. <laughs> They are very, there's uh, 250,000 described species, so that is pretty cool. <laughs> and order, Lepidoptera is the butterflies, are the butterflies and moths. Uh, dip, order Diptera are the true flies, the kind that like to swarm at picnics. Uh, Siphonoptera. Order Siphonoptera is the fleas, and order Hymenoptera are the ants, bees, and wasps. So, that's just about it. There were a few I didn't cover, I kind of just went over the, um, the most popular insects. I have ladybugs on my shirt. Oh, you know what? I didn't tell you guys. I think they're considered true bugs. Hmm. Or they might be beetles. Three of their true bugs are beetles. Ladybugs. Um, I think they're like similar to what the Stink bugs uh, order. Yeah, so I didn't go cover those. Yeah. That's all that I have in my zoology book. And like I said, I do not have any examples of insects with me today, but I do have.
that offends anybody I know. Some people don't like drinking noises. Okay, so there's an article in here about beaver ants. Sisterhood of Weavers with a remarkable array of communication skills. Weaver ants may have perfected social networking. And ants use chemical cues to um, help signal to each other if one of them is in distress or if they found something beneficial or if a time to lay eggs, or the time for the queen to have eggs. Uh, everything is basically run on social cues. I mean, uh, chemical cues. This thing. Oh. oh my gosh, this ant is holding a silk producing larva in its jaws and squeezing it so that it secretes something sticky to bind leaves for the colony nest. That is wild. <laughs> this is why insects are so cool. Working together. Uh, if aliens ever do land on Earth, don't get all huffy if their greeting turns out to be take me to your aunt. That ant might be a queen mother, weighing about the same as a few grains of salt. But she, along with other queens and their worldwide empires, would match the weight of the seven billion people seething across the planet these days. Plus, the queens and their offspring have been living in large, highly organized, cooperative societies practicing activities from strategic army warfare to agriculture and livestock herding for at least 50 million years. We've been at it for what, 10,000 tops? Pretty cool. Save the queen if disturbed by an intruder. Minor workers, the castle ants that tends to her majesty and envelop the matriarch to protect her. And this talks about how they articulate with each other through chemical symbols and this, this one's physical. It, physical and chemical humans, different pheromones that signal different things to the other ants. This shows the ants eating a scorpion. With speed and sheer numbers, they can overwhelm and pin scorpions and other large prey. I ac actually saw a documentary on National Geographic years ago, and I don't know if they were weaver ants or what kind of ants they were, but they, uh, together as a colony, overwhelmed and pinned a, like, a wildebeest or some kind of large four-legged undulate and consumed him within a day. That is extreme ants. <laughs> so, very interesting. One other thing I wanted to show. Oh, they don't have it here. Nature Scam Artists, in this one, page 70. So, The Art of Deception, 
Sometimes survival means lying, stealing, or vanishing in place. Which starts with toads. And then it shows, this I think is uh, similar to a stink bug, this creature here blending in. And also, I'm sure everyone knows that oftentimes when an animal advertises bright colors, it's either poisonous or it's mimicking um, another animal that is poisonous. And mimicking is very common in insects, but predators don't look different. Here's a Katie did. I don't even know if you can see it. I had a hard time finding it, but she's like right there. <laughs> That's really well camouflaged. Mimicry in nature can charm or repel us, but whatever our human judgments, this much is true. Scamming works, suckering every sense. Here's a leaf. Leaf like species. It's a walking leaf, is what it's called. So I do the walking stick naturally. Oh, this is crazy looking moth. An extra pair of eyes, even phony ones, can be a boon to insects hunted by predators that target by sight. Here's the moth camouflaged, and here's his extra set of fake eyes. A nymph is hiding amongst ants. They can't determine which one they're eating sap, and the nymph is very well concealed. And to be honest, I could not discern which was the plant, which was the nymph. Caterpillars that look like leaves. And this is crazy. These ants here. See how one of them has a red bottom? This one. <clears throat> For one nematode parasite, the goal is not to escape, but to be eaten. When it hijacks an ant, it turns its host's back end as red and prominent as ripe fruit. This likely dupes a bird into feeding on it and getting a mouthful of nematode eggs. The bird spreads the eggs through its feces, which the ants eat, continuing the cycle. That's crazy. And the last article I'll show you is Dazzling Insect Eggs. There's just a couple of pictures. I thought were really cool. This is a zebra long wing butterfly egg. The egg contains the cyanide. Stink bug eggs. off with uh, whispering some strange and interesting facts and I'm gonna get close to the camera. Uh, I was told that there is a binaural mic on this camera but I don't think that it is. Uh, there might be another part in the in my dad's music room that I will try to access and figure all that out because I noticed when I watch videos, sometimes I do enjoy the effect, that effect, when I have my headphones on. Um, but I'm going to give it a try nonetheless, so let me get close. Okay. Hello. Ants can lift and carry 
more than 50 times their own weight. Beetles account for one quarter of all known species of plants and animals. There are more kinds of beetles than all plants. Termites eat through wood two times faster when listening to rock music.
the Arctic turn flies from the North Pole to the South Pole and then back again to spend summer in each place. A housefly lives for only 14 days. That's about it. So. I hope that you guys enjoy the flirty about insects and more importantly, I hope that you were able to relax and um, if you have any requests for other animal groups, I did get a request about birds and I have kind of something in the, in the make for that. It's going to involve um, like deciduous forest uh, trees, birds and animals in general as the leaves are changing colors, which is my favorite time of year. So um, other than that, please, uh, please feel free to leave any comments or advice for me as always.